run your law firm the right way. This is the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. Hey, it's Dyson. I'm back with another Saturday episode. And today I want to talk about something that might might sting a little bit for some of you, but it's full of learning opportunities. And that's lessons learned from bad hires. Regardless of how large or small your firm is, hiring the right people is absolutely crucial. And I'm not, I mean, we, we're talking about teammates that are virtual assistants. We're talking about in-seat hires. We're talking about virtual hires, whatever it may be. We're talking about hiring is what we're talking about. So whether you're just remote and have VAs or you've got people that are in the office, those are all factors you obviously have to consider, but we're going to talk about generally hiring today. It applies to all of you, but what happens when hires go wrong, right? How do you, how do you deal with that? We're going to try to prevent that by going through some of lessons that I have learned before I get into that though. I want to remind you, if you want to get stage one of maximum lawyer and minimum time, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to make that available to people. If you do want stage one for free, text us stage one to 314-501-9260. You'll get that absolutely free. We give that to Guild members, when they join the guild, they get all stages for free. When they join, we're going to give you, just for being a listener, stage one. So make sure you text us to them. Let's jump into it. So let's face it, no matter how skilled we are at law, hiring is an area where even the best can falter. And I'm going to talk about that in, in a little bit. A bad hire, it can happen for any number of reasons. It could be a rush decision. It could be that you're overlooking red flags. It could be a misalignment in values. It could be a mismatch with workplace culture. No matter what, it does happen. So whatever the reason, it does happen. There's valuable lessons that can be learned in these moments. And so there's one of these things where you have to assess it. You can do everything right in your hiring process and still get it wrong. So don't beat yourself up too much. Because, And I'm going to talk about that now. We just had to... Five days into her hire, terminate a new employee. All right. We we didn't want to do it. We have gone back to try to assess everything to see where we went wrong. We qu- we have not quite figured it out yet because we 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 put her through the exact same process that has has gotten us really good culture. We have gotten a great culture at the firm. We've we've been using top grading, which I talk about in. Uh, another episode uh, and it's it's been fantastic somehow though on this one we missed okay and what's weird is that she was a clear number one candidate number two was a distant number two and somehow we missed it and it just happens but you've got to go you got to learn from it and you got to move on and what's really important is you always got to be hiring that way you can you you've got this pipeline of candidates and you can go back and boom keep moving and that's what we did. We we end up for our number three candidate. We went back and we what we we did is we put him on a there was other reasons why we excluded number two, which I won't get into, but number three, that candidate, we put him on a probationary period. He's been doing great so far, but we what we we had him in the pipeline. Okay. We went back to him, said, Hey, we 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 reassessed. Let's see what we can do here. And he's on, he's on a probationary period now. He's doing great, much better than the first candidate. And sometimes you just get it wrong. Okay. And I talk about our hiring process in another episode. That's why I'm not going to go into detail about it. If you want that, look up one of our uh, other episodes where we go into detail. Jim and I have an episode where we talk about where we actually interview our office administrator. She talks about it a lot, and then we also I do it on a Saturday show too. So we can put those in the show notes. All right. So let's get into some of these lessons though. So lesson number one and it's really about the importance of cultural fit. And that's something that we was clearly missing with this new hire. Okay. It was evident on day one, it was not going to work. And somehow, you know, somehow we missed it, but we caught it. It was one of those things where we assessed, we were able to catch it very quickly and then make a decision just was not a good fit. You want to assess from the beginning culture fit. If they're, if they're not going to work out, you got to make that decision because the problem with someone that does not fit the culture, it can affect everything else. It can affect a lot of other employees. And if you kind of think of like that bad apple that then rots the other apples, 
you got to think about it from that perspective. And so make sure that whoever it is fits really well with the culture of your firm. We, we talk about, we hire peeps and we talk about that in another episode too, which I won't get into, but we we're looking for that energy. We're looking for the people that can energize other people and they have that, have that passion. But I mean, you gotta, you gotta have passion for what we do. And if you don't, it's just not gonna work out. And so we're, we're assessing from the very beginning. Okay. How, how are they on culture? That is, you know, that's why it's lesson number one. This is maybe the most important thing. So make sure you're looking for that. Many of the technical skills we can teach, but culture is something that's just, it, it, it's going to disrupt everything else. So watch out for that. Another thing is, and I, I can tell you early on, whenever my you know, previous partner, whenever we, we split, what was interesting is, is that I rushed a hire very, very quickly. And just to kind of get us, you know, up to speed and it was a great reset for the firm because I was able to kind of reset everything and then build a new firm almost from scratch. And it was great. And I was able to rebuild everything from the, from the ground up. And it was awesome. That being said, I did rush. I made a really bad hire, maybe my worst hire I've ever made. And it was because I rushed it. I did not, we'd already at this point had a, a, a pretty, I'd put together because of my work with Jason Selk. I had put together a pretty thorough hiring process at this time. So the hiring process we had in place, I had ignored it though. And I rushed it. And what happened was that because of that, I ignored red flags, which is one of those things you don't want to do and rushed it, ignored some red flags. So there's really two lessons here. Don't ignore the red flags. <laughs> if you've got them on your list, don't ignore them. But the other one is just don't rush it. Put them through the process that you have. Do all of those interviews. And and if they don't pass around they don't pass around and they don't move on. Okay. You have to make sure that they pass every single round test, whatever you throw at them. If they don't, they're excluded. And if you have zero candidates by the end of your process, guess what? You have zero candidates. You keep, you keep looking for people. You don't just rush it because you need someone because a bad hire is going to cost you a lot of money. It's going to cost you a ton of money, a ton of time. It's, it's better to put more time into to hiring and, and finding the right person than it is to, you know, spend a few extra hours at the office for a few weeks. Okay. So it's just, just, just make sure you do that. Interesting about that. The bad hire I was talking about is the, she had done something and I don't know why I, I overlooked this, but she was late for her first interview. And then she had to reschedule her second interview because she said she didn't, her husband had planned something and um, she didn't know about it. Okay. <laughs> so those are both just two massive red flags where, it sounds like one, one of the red flags was that she was late to her interview. Didn't, didn't even call ahead to say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be running behind. But the other thing is like, it, may, it sounds like her, her personal life may be a mess. And it was, it was an absolute mess, which caused a lot of problems with her being able to get into the office on time and, and, and a lot of other problems. And so don't, don't ignore those red flags. Make sure you're doing those comprehensive interviews to make sure you're finding out as many of the details, details as you can to figure out a lot of those things. You know, one of the things is, is that uh, I want to talk about trusting your gut. That's another lesson. You know, it's it's interesting how often our intuition it can give us the signals that we need that something just isn't quite right. And although I'm not I'm not a huge person that you know, saying like, hey, just trust your gut. Uh, I'm not. But sometimes, if you've got a feeling for whatever reason, there might be, and we say gut, but there's there's probably you know reasons. You know, there's are, there are actual reasons that you. Although you may not be able to identify them, your brain is telling you there's something that's wrong here and I shouldn't hire them. And so if you've got that with a situation, if there's just something about a hire that you just, you know, it's just not right. It's not clicking during the interview. Then you might just want to, to reassess and maybe get another opinion. Okay. Get another opinion on things. That way they can tell you another, another person on the team can say, Hey, you know, this, that, yeah, you're right. That's not going to work out. Or, you know, maybe you're, you're wrong. Let's give it another interview. Another lesson is that I've learned is that make sure you're using team interviews that way. Cause sometimes you have bad days, right? Sometimes you have bad, bad days. Sometimes the candidate has bad days, but if you do, if you're doing team interviews and in multiple team interviews, by the way, not just one team interview, you're doing multiple team interviews, even though you might be having a bad day, your teammates probably not having a bad day and they can, they can assess it from a different situation. That way you're not bringing your, your biases into the interview. You're, you're actually going in and you're, you, you've got different perspectives and maybe sometimes you're just wrong. Sometimes you're missing things. Sometimes you're not picking up on it the right way. Maybe you misunderstood something that was said. So that's something else too, is, is a lesson that I've learned. It's really valuable is making sure you're doing team interviews really, really important. And then 
you know, the last, the last one I want to get into, cause I talked a little bit about, you know, probationary periods and that's something that I, I do recommend. I'm not going to go into detail, detail about that. I do want to say that that's something you should, you should consider if you don't do it now, but the really the last thing I want to get into is it's okay to admit that you did, that you made a mistake, but here's the deal. If you do acknowledge that you made a bad hire, you've got to make it's it's not fair to them and it's not fair to you to or your team to keep that hire in the office and, and to keep them employed. You might feel really, really bad about the you hired them and maybe they they quit their other job and maybe feel bad and oh, maybe we'll hold on to them. The reality is is that they're not a good fit, they're not a good fit, and they're gonna make everyone else miserable in your office. It's gonna it's gonna cause a lot more problems. The best thing for you to do for that person and for you and for your team, go ahead and let them go. Acknowledge the fact that you made the mistake and it's okay. It's okay. Okay. I'm gonna say it one more time. It's okay to acknowledge the fact that you've made a mistake. It happens. Okay. But the best thing for everyone is to just you don't want to lead that person along. Okay. They may have other job prospects, by the way, they, you just hired them. They may have jo- other job prospects that they have not yet turned down that if you hold on to them, they will lose those job prospects. So it's best to let them go, explain to them, Hey, it's just not working out, not a good fit and move on from it. Okay. Just, just move on from it. Acknowledge the mistake and move on. All right. That's all I have for you. Hopefully some of these tips, some of these lessons will help you in some of your hiring. And and just, I'll say it one more time, it's okay if you make a mistake, you're going to make a mistake. I think just knowing going in, you're going to make a mistake in hiring it at some point, even if you've hit a home run on every single one of them, at some point you're going to make a mistake. It's okay. It happens. All right. Let's wrap things up. As a reminder, if you have something you want me to cover on the Saturday shows, just shoot me a text, text me 314-501-9260 and I will get to it when I can. There's lots of great episodes we've had, a lot of great suggestions, and I'm getting to all of them as quickly as possible. But there's only one Saturday a week, and so I can't get to all of them at one time, but I definitely will. Thank you for your suggestions. I really appreciate it. And uh, shoot me a text if you have any questions about anything too. I'd be happy to respond. Until next week, remember that consistent action is the blueprint that turns your goals into reality. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your host and to access more content, content. go to MaximumLawyer.com. Have a great week and catch you next time.